In this video, we're going to show you how to make a bumper switch for your Bitsy bot. Uh, so we've got the wires connected to 1 and 3, the, uh, the power is connected to 1 and 3, and you can see the LED light up there. And then when we switch the power to 1 and 2, the uh, LED turns off when we push the switch instead of turning on. So we want to connect the wires to 1 and 3. Uh, we're just going to double check this with our uh, multimeter. And so when we connect the uh, contacts to 1 and 2, you can see that it turns off when uh, the power when the button is pressed, and then when connected to one and three, it turns on when the button is pressed. So we want to connect to one and three, and uh, you can see there's a one and three uh, really small uh, on the uh, on the lever switch there. And you can buy uh, micro lever switches like this from Radio Shack or a variety of places online. And so now we've got our, uh, our alligator clips, and we're going to. Uh, bend the wire around the uh, 1 and 3 contacts so that we can get a good connection. And then we're going to uh, solder those wires in place to make sure that they don't come out. And we're using our needle nose plier to squeeze the wire against the connection there. And I've already put some solder on those connections to make them a little easier to solder to. Um, there we go, we got the first wire in place. And uh, the number 3 connection, we're going to just clamp that down and then we'll go ahead and heat it up and We've got that soldered in place too. So now those wires are soldered well. And to make sure that the connection's good and that we got everything soldered correctly, we're going to go ahead and turn on our multimeter and check the ends of the wire. So we'll strip the ends of the wire off there and uh, use some alligator clips. And uh, we'll clip to the ends of the leads on our multimeter. And that way we can make sure that, yeah, in fact, the switch is wired correctly and it's working. So now we're going to take the outer housing that surrounds the uh, bot off. And we're going to try and uh, position the switch. So we're going to drill some holes. And we'll use the uh, holes that are actually in the uh, switch as a guide for our drill. It's important that you make sure that you don't drill into your fingers when you're doing this kind of close work. Um, so you want to keep your fingers away uh, from, from the uh, drill bit itself. Um, but we've positioned that drill, we've positioned that switch so that it is right off of the edge of the Bitsy Bot. Um, so it sticks out over the edge, you can see right there, sort of tangent to the circle. And that'll be important when we get uh, the rest of our connector there in place. And we've put the, uh, put the screws in upside down, and that's so when we put our speaker back in place, uh, it, the, the uh, bolts that are protruding won't interfere with that speaker. So that, that's why they're sticking up from the underside. So we're just tightening those down again with the screwdriver and the need needle nose plier. Pliers. And we just use 12 gauge solid copper wire, and the re uh, or we're using 12 gauge solid copper wire. And the reason for that is that it uh, allows us. It's pretty stiff, so it'll uh, it'll allow us to extend the lever arm of our switch considerably. So anything that gets in front of our Bitsy Bot will be able to be um, will be able to trigger its um, its bumper switch. And this is a bit of an improvement over the previous design. So we're we're just drilling a hole in the back there, and that's going to put we're going to put a uh, a screw in and that that screw is it's basically a machine screw and it's going to hold our our lever made out of that wire in place so we just twisted the wire around like a snail and now that the wires in place we can uh, bend it so that it makes the right kind of connection with the uh, switch and this takes a fair amount of sort of trial and error but uh, once you get the uh, wire bent correctly, it'll trigger the switch every time and um, it'll extend the reach of that switch. So you only need to use one switch instead of, say, multiple ones. Um, and uh, so we're just going to get our bolt there and tighten that down. And now it's really important that that nut and bolt that are and the washer that are holding that wire in place are tightened very tightly um, because if the wire slips, it won't trigger, it, it won't return to its location. It'll, it'll just sort of move and hold the, uh, hold the switch uh, down. So if you want to make sure that the wire's tight, really tight, so that it, uh, or the bolt is really tight, so that the wire doesn't um, stay pressed against the switch, so that it returns to its original location. So it's really important to tighten that all the way down. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side, and um, drill the, uh, the holes out for the switch on the other side. So now that we've got the, uh, the switch on the other side drilled out, we're going to go ahead and install our, our nuts and our screws. And this is actually a good example of, of a term called pokey oak. Uh, and th that means basically it's a, it's a Japanese term that refers to designing parts in such a way that they can't be installed uh, 
wrong. And so this part is not poke yoked. It's, uh, it's actually the switch is in backwards. And I hadn't realized that it was in backwards until I put the, uh, the uh, switch extender, the green wire that's the 12 gauge solid core copper with a little snail tail in. So I snake that around the, uh, the screw that's right next to the switch. And then I realize that I can't, it won't trigger the switch because the switch is in backwards. So in industry, sometimes, uh, part, you know, if parts are designed very similarly, they, somebody may put the wrong part in or they may put the, the part in backwards because uh, it's, it's so similar. Uh, and so what they'll do is they'll design it with some features so that it can't, that can't happen, and they call that poke yoking. And so this is not poke yoke, so I take the uh, switch back out and flip it around so that the lever extends off of the edge of the radius of the circle, tangent to the circle, so that the, uh, when, it, when the uh, switch extender or that 12 gauge wire can, uh, pushes against it, it will cause the, uh, the switch to trigger and uh, allow us to uh, reverse direction or perform a number of different functions. Again, it's important to tighten that switch down uh, pretty s snugly. And those switches, again, can be bought from anywhere from like Radio Shack or any place that sells lever switches. Um, and they're not, not very expensive. So now we're going to wire the switches, and we're going to take two of the leads, uh, one lead from each switch, and run it to the, the positive terminal on our, uh, on our board down there. So this is the, the, the uh, extender board or the power distribution board that we created. And uh, so the, you can tell the positive side because it's got a plus on it, and we, we've run a red wire to it to power it. So we're, just, we're going to take two of our switch wires, and run them to the positive side of our power distribution board and connect them there. So now that we've got the uh, power distribution connected, the ground wires connected, we're going to take a look at the uh, initial sketch for our code. And we've got, looks like our bumper switches are A5 and A4. The rear is the A5 and the front one is the A4. So those are the analog 5 and 4 uh, connections. So that's uh, around the other side of our breadboard there. It's close to uh, the uh, tw between 24 and 30 on the uh, breadboard, so uh, the 20 rows 24 and 30. So we're stripping our wires and getting those set up. To uh, and those are the wires that are coming from our switch, the the other side of our switch. And before we connect those, we're going to use some 10k ohm resistors. These 10k ohm resistors uh, are going to uh, help to li to limit the current there for us. And uh, we're going to connect the uh, switch wire to one side of the uh, 10k ohm resistor, and on on each resistor, and then we're going to connect the other side of the resistor to a, a ground wire. And the, so we're going to cut our ground wires there, and then again strip the ends of the wires so that we can make contact. And we're going to connect those ground wires to the uh, negative or ground side of our power distribution board, which is underneath our Arduino. Got to kind of thread them in there. And then we'll run those over back to the same location on our breadboard as our 10K ohm resistors. And once we get them back over to the uh, same location, we'll strip the ends of them off and we'll connect them to the same row as the other side of our resistor. So now we're ready to connect uh, the uh, setup to our Arduino. So again, we're going to go to pinout A5 and pinout A4, and we'll connect those to the same row as the green wires that you can see there are connected to. Those are our switch wires. And so now our circuit is ready for our bumper switches. So now it's, now it's time for us to uh, uh, double check and see if those things are working. And before we do that, though, I think we're going to uh, reattach our speaker. We had to move our speaker so that we could pop it up out of the way so that we could get uh, to the uh, lever switch that we installed. Uh, we needed to be able to put those screws in, and they, they actually sit underneath where the speaker is. So we had to move the speaker. Now we've reinstalled it, glued it back into place. That's one of the great things about hot glue. It, it does pop loose easily. Uh, so now we're going to uh, test the device, and you can see it's running there. We've got uh, some code running on the Arduino, and when we push on our bumper switches, it causes the motors to stop like it's supposed to. Uh, the code will be available on our videos for the Arduino, and we'll also create a link for that when we uh, post those videos as well.